Welcome back. I want to talk a little bit about silky picks and specifically highlight recovery. Um, and I think there's kind of a feeling sometimes you read some online forums or, or whatnot that silky picks isn't very good at this. And actually, it's it's very good at it. Um, what there isn't, there isn't a slider as such. Well, there's a few, that, but there isn't like a, a highlight slider that you just kind of drag over and and highlights start magically reappearing. But there is this highlight controller uh, sub-control, which I have right here, um, which I'm going to set back to default. Um, and it's actually has some default settings that do some highlight recovery, and so you don't necessarily notice that the highlights have been recovered in a lot of cases. Um, and what it's really good at is, is those areas where the channels are just starting to clip. Um, and there are four controls here. And the app defaults, um, chroma is set by default to 25, saturation hue is set to 50, luminance restoration is set to 50, and DR expansion seems to be set based on the camera model and the ISO. And so what I wanted to show you, I think, is, is how these work together. Now, in an earlier video, I talked about how you set the white point by using the um, exposure slider. Um, which is up here, and I stand by that. You really do want to keep your white point, unlike some other um, raw converters where the exposure is more of a brightness slider. Um, this is really, uh, the exposure slider in Silky Picks really sets where your white point is going to be. Um, and then I just kind of want to go through what these other sliders do, and to do that we're going to pull up our old uh, fancy step wedge. I'm just going to hit uh, and X to reset it from any settings you may have. A black to white. I do this so that it mirrors. I, I've reversed this so that it mirrors the the histogram so that it's easy to see what's going on. Um, I want to talk about this dynamic range slider. And as you drag this dynamic range slider, um, look at what happens here. And then more importantly, look at what happens in the histogram. As we drag it over, it really does compress all of those bright areas kind of drags them back, um, but there's kind of a hard stop right around here. So um, what will happen is if you drag the dynamic range too far, uh, images will start to flatten out, especially in the highlights. The highlights will look very flat. Um, so be careful with this slider, but you can use it to just kind of pull back a little bit extra um, of those highlights. Um, some of those ch channels that might just start to be clipping. You can use this dynamic range to kind of open it up. I don't ever go above like about three, um, and that would be for an extremely contrasty scene. Um, I usually like to keep it usually where the, the, uh, the default settings are. Um, actually, most of these default settings in probably 90% of the pictures you're, or the images you're, you're editing, you could probably just leave them right where they are. So this is dynamic range. Going up a little bit, this luminance restoration, and uh, when I first read this, I really misunderstood what this was about. I thought this was a um, bringing back detail in areas that have been blown out, and actually what it's for is if we look at, um, and this might be hard to see because this is a very subtle control, but I'm just going to bring it all the way down to zero. I got a uh, sunset picture here, not quite set. Um, if for some reason, uh, for whatever creative reason, we decided to pull this exposure up here all the way down like this, um, and the picture becomes very moody. I would probably not do this with this picture, but um, just for the sake of example, um, you can see a whole image is starting to get darker. Um, the sky is sort of starting to turn a little bit gray, or the sun, excuse me, is starting to turn a little bit gray, which is generally not the color that people expect with the sun. And if we pull this luminance restoration all the way up, you may not see it, but it kind of restored that that brightness um, to the sun. So there's all the way off. There's all the way up. Let's see if we can enhance that. You see, the sky is the sun is starting to be a little bit gray, especially in the center. We pull the luminous restoration. We bring back that brightness. So this is really good for um, specular highlights, um, the sun, stars, anything that's really, really bright that really should be white. 
If it starts to kind of go a little bit gray, you can use a luminance restoration to pull it back. Um, now the other two sliders here is chroma luminance and the saturation hue. And what this has to do with is as channels start getting clipped, we want to recover it more for the color or more for the um, tonal value. Um, and I found a picture there where this actually shows up really well. This is um, just an orange tree, and there's a bunch of oranges, but the nice thing is that the oranges part that are up here are really in highlight. If we pull the DR down, you can see that they're actually um, quite bright. So first thing is by you bringing the DR up, um, we do recover that. And how we recover that in this picture, the default, it says recover it mostly for the for the chroma, bias it towards the chroma side, and then give about equal weight to saturation and hue. So if we were to pull this chroma over, balance more to the luminance side, you can see that we recover more luminance value, but we lose kind of the color of that orange up here and up here. Um, if you pull all the way to the chroma side, um, we get almost all color recovered. And then we'll leave this back here. Maybe we'll put it up to 50. For the saturation and hue side, again, it's more about are you going to bias it towards the saturation, um, that really saturated part of the color, or more just keep it towards the hue, which in this case is not very attractive. But the important thing is you, you really want to, as you see channels getting clipped, you really want to play a little bit with these because um, uh, usually you bias it towards the hue. Um, if you have a chance, if you have just one, if you have something that's like lit with a red light, for example, um, you may find that um, if you bias it towards the chroma that you don't uh, you get a lot, you lose a lot of the details. You may need to pull it over the luminance side. Um, things that are very saturated, flowers and, and oranges and stuff, tend to do very well by pushing this towards the saturation side. Um, show you another example. Um, this is the CN Tower in Toronto. Um, as you can see, um, that's kind of the default. And if we start moving this chroma over, we actually start getting a little bit of the, the purple kind of gets broken up a little bit here, which I prefer. But again, this is very, um, you know, it's what you want to get out of the picture. That's, uh, that's how this gonna, these, these uh, tools are going to work. Um, we can just pull the, as you can see, if we pull the DR value up really high, this all starts getting kind of flat, um, which is why you want to kind of keep it back here. But um, that's really the... Uh, the highlight controller. I hope you got some ideas about how it works. Um, it is not, uh, like I said, it's not a slider. You just kind of slide over and magically recover things. Um, but it is a more intelligent uh, method. And actually, if you look at a lot of images um, in Silky Picks and in um, in other raw converters, you'll see that a lot of them you don't really have a lot of choice. And so, if you had an image like this um, that was a little bit brighter, you might just have a kind of gray or white up here, whereas Silky Picks does a nice job of uh, being more intelligent about uh, bringing back the color. Um, so that's uh, the highlight controller. Uh, I hope you learned something. Um, I always learn something by just uh, playing around with these things and, and trying to understand what they do. Um, if you have questions or comments, please feel free to uh, put them down at the bottom of this video on YouTube or ask me on Facebook. And uh, certainly feel free to like these or subscribe to them. Um, I certainly appreciate uh, um, the feedback I've gotten from other users, and I hope to hear from you.